Hey everyone, in this video we will be solving second degree trigonometric equations and providing solutions on specified domains as well as providing the general solution. Let's get started. Um, so again we're going to have two examples here and for each equation in those examples we're going to solve on a specified domain, state the general solution, and report answers as exact values where possible. So this is a second degree trig equation. You recognize it by noting that there is actually a squared trigonometric uh, term. Um, there may be first degree terms in there as well, but I mean this should really remind you of a quadratic, which is a second degree polynomial function. So uh, this would be a second degree trigonometric equation. So the first thing you want to do is actually, uh, funny that I should mention quadratics, you should treat this like a quadratic, right? You've got a squared term, a linear term, and a constant. So what we're going to do here is uh, first we will just move all the terms to one side, namely the left side, and then we'll look at this as a quadratic and if we were to solve this as a quadratic we could use the formula, the quadratic formula, or we can factor. So if we were to factor this I think it actually factors nicely. Uh, so to get 2 sine squared it would have to be 2 sine theta times sine theta, and to get 1, uh, it would have to be 1 times 1, so we just have to play around with the negatives uh, to make this work. So I believe we need to have a, a negative here and a positive there, and that will give us the proper factoring of this uh, equation. So I've got 2 sine squared theta plus sine theta minus sine theta, sorry, plus 2 sine theta minus 1 sine theta. Um, that will give us positive sine theta. Yeah, this is great. So from here, we simply take each of these factors and set them equal to zero. So 2 sine theta minus 1 equals zero when uh, add one to both sides, divide both sides by two when sine theta equals half. And sine theta plus one equals zero, obviously when sine theta itself is equal to negative one. Okay, so again, I'm going to go grab my unit circle here. Now I get to grab a pre-made unit circle, you guys, uh, probably can't do that and so you're just drawing a quick little circle with an x-axis and a y-axis on the side um, that will help you to determine um, or refresh your memory as to you know the angles on the unit circle so sine theta is equal to half uh, right here and right here right against the y-coordinate it's about halfway up the unit circle and sine theta is equal to negative one down here, straight down. The y-coordinate is negative 1, which is the full length of the radius of the unit circle. Okay, so having done that, uh, we can recognize that uh, this angle right here is, uh, what are we in, degrees? Okay, so we're in degrees, so this would be 30 degrees. Uh, this angle here would be 30 degrees shy of 180, so we'll say 150 degrees. And straight down, that would be 90, 180, 270 degrees. Okay, so for a, and I guess we kind of started a here, theta would be equal to uh, 30, 150, and 270 degrees. Okay, so as soon as we get into second degree trig equations, um, we're, we're not going to necessarily just have uh, two roots on the domain 0 to 2 pi, or in this case 0 degrees to 360 degrees. We might come up with a, a few more. In this case one more okay and then part B would be the general solution and we've already done all the dirty work here it's not going to take that much longer to figure out the general solution I can get away with three different statements for the general solution so I could say 30 degrees plus multiples of 360 comma 150 degrees in fact let me write these down 30 degrees plus multiples of 360 so full rotations to get the coterminal angles I could write 150 degrees plus 360n, and I can write 270 degrees plus 360n. And technically that's right, right? As long as n is an element of the integers, but man, that is a lot to write. You'll notice that the difference between 30 and 150 is 120 degrees. And if you add another 120 degrees to 150, you get 270. Let's see if we can complete the trifecta. If you add another 90, you get to 360, and then 90 plus 30 gives you another 120 degrees. So we are consistently adding 120 degrees to go from solution to solution or root to root. When you find that you can do that, you can condense the number of statements that you need for the general solution. So in this case, 
we can say, look, it's, it's 30 degrees for sure. And then we're going to just basically add multiples of 120 degrees. Right? Because if you do that, you're just going to keep getting to the next root, next root, next root. That's how you, that's how you make your way around this unit circle is just keep adding 120 degrees. And look at this. I get it. I get everything on one line. N is an element of the integers. And that's your general solution.